Welcome, welcome. We are going to be presenting today on harnessing artificial intelligence to foster the learning of English learners across all content areas. So let me introduce myself. I'm Judy Ann Ganshaw. I am the computer science coordinator for Santa Clara County Office of Education. And I'm here with, with Anupama. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Anupama Gupta. I'm the EdTech coordinator at the Santa Clara County Office of Education. And welcome to our session. We're really excited that you're joining us today. We have some pretty specific objectives to uh, accomplish today in our in our time. And the first is that we all have a good understanding of what the core principles of artificial intelligence for supporting multilingual education. The second is to learn how you can use artificial intelligence to personalize learning for these for these students and to support their learning. And the last one is to spend some time becoming acquainted with these tools uh, so you can see how you might use these in your practice. So we have a little poll for you and uh, Anupama is gonna put the link in the chat or you can use the QR code, whichever one you wish. And we just wanna know what your experience is with AI. So I'm gonna switch uh, my screen to show what the poll is showing. So you should see these five different choices. So if you had to characterize your experience with artificial intelligence, which of these best illustrates your experience level in using artificial intelligence. So I'll give you a moment to do so. Okay, just waiting for everybody to respond. Thanks, Anu. The link is in the chat, or you can use the QR code. So this is really important for us to know. Or do we have experts in the room? Do we have people that are pretty good, represented by that sedan? Maybe you feel like you're at the Model T or bicycle, or you're really just starting out. You're at the at the wheel level. All right. So here's our here is our here are our results. Sorry, I now I have to switch my screen to this one. So it seems like we have people that are mostly in the middle. We don't have any very beginners and we don't have any super experts, but half of you about in the sedan. So this is really good. Hopefully you'll have you'll all find something that is matches your experience and will be uh, useful for all of you. Okay, I'm gonna go back to our presentation. All right. Thank you so much for doing that. And I am going to turn it over to, as soon as my screen comes up, there we go, to Anu. Hi. So welcome, everyone. Uh, we're very happy and excited to have you here today. So let me go over the agenda very briefly. Uh, we will talk uh, about what is AI and what you need to know. Uh, we will dig into the transformative potential of AI. I think that's where all our interests and eyes and ears are. And then we'll play a little with all, some of the tools of AI, which can help us transform or uh, impact education. And then if there's time, we will have some time for playground or like playing with some of the tools and uh, explore some more. So, and you also see the link of the digital home base on the slide deck. So if you want to go on that, you can take that link and go on that too. So moving on. Okay, so let's get the ball rolling. Um, let, we will talk about this, um, what is AI? 
how does it function, AI, in, and how AI is in every subject. Um, so I know like most of you are at the stage, good to know that you kind of have an idea and, it, and by this time, everyone knows what is AI, how it functions, so we really have to like kind of briefly go over it and then move on to the next topic. So moving on. Okay, so what is artificial intelligence anyway? I'll begin by just giving you an analogy about like artificial. So when we think of about artificial, we think about which is not natural, but it is man-made. So machine, artificial equals machine. And intelligence, we talk about being smart. So, but that's kind of like restricted in one area, but here we talk about intelligence in all content areas. So you would say that it is kind of like an understanding. So you can say where machine understands and works uh, in the way of human beings. So artificial intelligence is any machine that that both processes it processes information and acts like a human. And they are pre-trained uh, with large data sets to perform certain functions. And um, lastly, the model is then refined and tuned with or without human interaction to optimize the performance. So this is like a clear layman terms understanding of what is artificial intelligence. Moving on to the next slide. Now here is a little bit more complex and more academic term description of what is artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is in every subject area. It is an interdisciplinary field that leverages math, statistics, cognitive science, and computer science, and to be able to problem solve in using vast data sets. This image we have taken from Louisiana State University uh, website, and you can see the link right there. And it's really a great depiction of understanding this whole system and how it works. So as you, as you can see, it is at the center, you have the deep learning. And that is like the, the most complex and mature form of artificial intelligence. And this kind of like mim mimics human brain where all these artificial neural network works. And above, and that above that is machine learning which is uh, more like a common form uh, type of artificial intelligence where machines make independent decisions, decisions, but still need the human to guide and correct it. And these are all subsets of artificial intelligence. So, but what they both have in common is how they uh, use algorithms and data sets to create intelligent systems to make predictions, decisions, and classification. And uh, what deep learning uses is unsupervised learning, which comes out of uh, data, using data, looking at algorithms and making predictions. So where we cannot correct it, while machine learning is where humans can intervene and correct it. So when we think about unsupervised learning, deep learning, which goes on, that's where we need to start thinking about what data sets are they using, how is it making those decisions, and how do how can we intervene and make sure that these biases and misinformation doesn't affect our thinking and our actions. So this leads us to just going into the next topic, and that is about ethics of AI. I know that's like a big concern. And right now we kind of get blinded with all the magic of AI and what it can do. But we always need to remember about knowing about the biases and misinformation, data privacy of students, because just like how initially when internet and technology was, it came into classrooms, we got, you know, easily, like we were thinking of ways how we can integrate it into every content area. And later we realized that digital citizenship you should have been taught along or before to be integrate technology. So same way with AI, we need to remember how we can teach our students and how we are aware of the ethics of AI. So moving on. So bias and misinformation. So um, some of the biases that we see, I mean, there are so many, but we have, you know, thought of 
highlighted a few, which comes to mind is the Turnitin uh, tool that's been very popularly used to detect uh, if students are using AI or not. Turnitin itself had, has admitted there, there has been more than many times where they have uh, accidentally or incorrectly given false, false positives. So how can we make sure that we do not penalize our students for using AI? And again, we also sometimes AI detectors uh, penalize multilingual, learn multilingual learners because uh, their writing sometimes uh, mimics how an AI would write, which will have which will not have uh, punctuation and their sentence structures may sometimes look as if it is generated by AI. So it may take it as and written by AI. And lastly, but not, I can't say enough about it, is, is that that AI often never says, I don't know. It will like kind of make up some answer. So that again reminds us that we cannot take what AI writes and gives us as the gospel truth and we literally you know, rely on what is giving out. So always keeping that our eyes and ears open about what is giving, how can, and not taking it as, as face value, what it is offering to us. So the human factor has to always be there. And moving on, so keep just talking about those three points, I want you to share if you have ever witnessed or experienced bias in AI. Like I gave you three examples of how sometimes it doesn't know and it makes up some, you know, answers or sometimes it, you know, penalizes um, as AI written when it is not. So have you experienced or do you have any instances when uh, such a situation happens? Have you witnessed or experienced anything? I'd like to hear from any one of you if you have experience in the chat if you, or you want to just uh, unmute yourself and share. Not yet. Okay, well, uh, I think uh, the more you use it, the more it may come up to you and you may see. And I have read some articles about how it has, uh, you know, the copyright and all those things have come up. But okay, so moving on, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so data privacy, students, and AI. So always remembering that chatbots are always collecting an information. So you know, to improve their service, just like you know how um, Alexa is always listening and how they're always uh, reminding you of things because you have been searching somewhere. So they are collecting information and they're, they're collecting data sets. So remember, it's like digital footprints, never share any personal information, never share any student name because they never forget. Thank you. Moving on. So can and should your students use chatbots? I know it's a much debated question, but it is a no brainer now that we all want students to use chatbots, but we need to remember some important considerations that ChatGPT is not available to students under 13. And if they are if they are 13, between 13 and 18, they need parent permission to use ChatGPT. So on one hand, we have these restrictions and constraints and things to remember. But on the other hand, we also know how, how, um, how it can be leveraged to make it work for our advantage. So chatbots can be used to provide valuable feedback and guidance. It can also be uh, used for, if you can click again to the end, for idea generation, for improving the student draft, and for explaining something in a different way. So here we have two things, and how do we balance and make it work for us, keeping those considerations in, in mind students and AI. So if students are using AI, they must learn how to utilize, utilize it efficiently and ethically. And for that, you know, having conversations, being open about it, not 
uh, not penalizing students for using AI, but talking to them how you can use it and in fact integrating it into your assignments and homework so that uh, you are showing how it can be used effectively and checking to see if your EdTech AI projects are compliant with FERPA and COPA by investigating private policy, privacy policy. So always checking the websites or AI tools that you are using and going into the private uh, private pol policies uh, to use to see if they have uh, permission for FERPA and COPA. And FERPA stands for Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. And COPA is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Group. Okay, so moving on. So with that, just giving you a little background about AI and how it functions, I'm going to hand it over to Julianne for the more fun and exciting digging into the potential of AI. Thanks, Anu. Thank you for that background. Uh, before we go on, I'm just wondering if everyone can put their what grade level of students that you work with. That uh, is also really good information for us as we're talking about some of the uses moving forward. TK6, TK5, admin 6-8, student in 10th grade, okay, TK8. So I'm curious, as a student in 10th grade, Pravin, do you use AI in your class? Are you allowed? Yeah, AI is actually a very, a very helpful tool and the teachers actually do recommend that we use it to, I guess, grasp knowledge of the stuff because challenging concepts like math and say like English where a passage or a concept is hard to digest, they recommend we use AI just to get our like step-by-step -step so we can uh, get it more comprehensive because we're able to ask like specific follow-up questions. So in that case, they um, actually advise that we do use AI as more of a helpful tool, but obviously in English, they condone it for uh, using it on like essays and um, cheating like that. Right. And so I'm just curious, so the, the, other, uh, the other people in the room can hear, so your teachers all have specific policies in place right now regarding using AI? AI? Correct. Yes, they do. Awesome. That makes me happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Very good. So go ahead and chime in on anything that you hear. Uh, love to have your perspective on these things. So yeah, I, absolutely. I'm, thank you. I'm I'm going to talk about now how the 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 positive side. We've talked about the limitations. We've talked about some of the considerations we need to have, and we cannot forget any of that as we move into the the usage. But it is so. It's such a powerful tool for us to transform the education for our students, especially multilingual learners. So uh, thinking about how can we create more autonomous and independent learning? Uh, how can we create more inclusive learning environments? How can we break down those language barriers? And how can we help students identify how they can improve their work? These are all things that take so much of teachers' time, but AI can help us bring all these to, to all our students and better support them. So let's start uh, by looking at that fostering autonomous and independent learning. So here's some just examples. This is not, I, I couldn't possibly give all the examples that, that we could possibly do, but here are some ways that we could do this. The first one being to adapt content and, and also form of delivery based on language proficiency. You could address individual learning styles if your students prefer video or audio you could adapt lessons using AI, or you could enhance student engagement, provide more opportunities for, for them to engage and participate uh, with the use of AI. All of these things you can already do without AI, but it just takes a very long time. And these uh, help, you, help you do that. So when we look at uh, driving English language mastery by adapting content, there's four main areas we can look at. One is to use the tools to facilitate language ac acquisition. So you can do translation, you can do modified reading levels, you can scaffold a text for a tier two or tier, th tier three vocabulary. As a middle school teacher, that was always the most challenging thing for my, for my English learners was adapting 
those especially science or math terms and dealing with the, the vocabulary and their ability to access the academic language uh, because they were uh, they you know they didn't have the the language for that so being able to modify reading levels and scaffolding text was important they also there's practicing uh, the language at, with feedback using a tool like Duolingo and then there's that speaking, listening, reading, writing with AI as the co-pilot. This is what Pravin was talking about just a, a couple minutes ago. How can you, how can you as a teacher, and if your students are of an age to be able to use the tool, help give feedback and improve all these skills alongside uh, AI with the AI as your, your co-pilot? And lastly, adapting learning for personalized instruction, tools like du Duolingo or Khan Academy, which will personalize instruction uh, for students based on what their, what their level is, what their language acquisition is. So let me just give a really simple example. So this is coming from math and science, sixth grade. Uh, so I'm gonna, and this is like right in about the middle of our, of our grade levels. Here's a short passage on uh, the uh, evaporation as part of the water cycle. Now in science and math, we always have these vocabulary terms, which are always challenging. Uh, and let's say I want to adapt this to a lower grade level. My sixth graders are reading at a fourth grade level. So I need to change that. So what I can do is I can use uh, a chatbot like like Claude or ChatGPT or Bing, or there's lots of other tools that you can use to transform it to that fourth grade reading level. And so this makes it simpler, okay? But you'll notice something very important. I kept the, the vocabulary word in there. When I asked Claude to change this from sixth grade to a fourth grade reading level, I said, keep this vocabulary word because that's one of the words that they need to make that's that they need to learn that's a, one of the standards is they learn these processes uh, that, that are part of the water cycle so when you're prompting one of the chatbots make sure you're specific uh, and you can ask for specific vocabulary to be kept you can ask for specific grade level or lexile level or language uh, but be be very specific about what you want and and you'll be uh, you and then you can get what you need uh, to provide with your students. Obviously, this is just a small sample. I would have I would give them more reading than this, but this is just a, a small piece. You can see uh, how we can change it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try. So I what I'd like you all to do now is either go go to one of these chatbots. Uh, if you have tried one, maybe you want to try a different one uh, than you've used before. I have preference, which I'm not going to say about which one uh, I would I would use, uh, but I'm going to put these links in the chat. And what I'd like you to do is just put a short reading, just a paragraph into one of these chatbots and then change the reading level. So whoops, I accidentally clicked on instead of copied. So these are three different, three different chatbots that are pretty commonly used. And as I said, if you've used one of these but haven't used a different one, try one you haven't tried before. And I'm just give you a minute. So grab uh, some grab a paragraph either from your curriculum or a lot of times if I need um, some academic material I go to ck12.org uh, and and pick a reading math science language arts whatever you feel like trying and and ask it to change the reading level does anybody have an example that you'd like me to do for all of us I can do a demonstration if you wish I don't have one for you to do, but I clicked on the Claude AI and it said, yes, that domain name is available. So I don't think it's linked up to the correct one or my computer's stupid, which is always possible. So <laughs> No, I think that that's not right. I wonder what, what did I do? Let me. Oh, it's oh. Claude.ai. No, I just, I just can't uh, copy and paste. <laughs> 
-hmm. It's supposed to be Claude.ai. Okay. Let me see. I missed the. Try that one. Claude has been in the news lately. <laughs> You've been, if you pay attention to those kind of things, because of the material that they've used to train. To train, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it was, uh, was it songwriters or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop share and I'm gonna fix the slide really quickly <laughs> oh i knew has got it thank you yeah. so anybody have any noticings or wonderings other than the fact that i had the wrong link my apologies especially if you're trying one you have not tried before Where's Parvin? Parvin, which is your favorite? Which one do you use? I'm curious. Uh, usually I use ChatGPT. Have you used Claude? I've never used Claude, no, but I've used actually the Google one quite a bit. The Google's uh, mm -hmm. Bard, I think, built into their search oh, engine. Bard. Yeah. Yeah, I, that, I find that one pretty cool. Okay, we're going to move on. If nobody, wants, if we don't have anybody, anybody want to share? What they so what? What we're going to be doing is I'm going to share. Uh, let me just check our time. Is I'm going to be sharing some examples of tools other than these chatbots. So anything that we're going to look at from from here on, you can always use one of these or a bard, which isn't on the list. Any of these chatbots could be used for any of the things that we're going to do. But some of some companies have created these, instead of having to write your own prompt, they have created like a shell of prompts for for to do these uh to do these things with uh with ai for your students and that's lovely because then now you don't have to create and think about your wording for your prompt and prompt engineering as they call it can be challenging sometimes to get what you want and so using these tools can make it very make it much easier for you to do uh and create the create what you're looking for uh, because these have been made so all right, so let's go ahead and look at. So make sure I can see the chat. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at one one thing that is always useful to do is to scaffold the text. When I have sixth graders, science and math, especially that academic language, a lot of times they're really struggling. They don't know what all those words, the tier two and tier three vocabulary are. The, the questions that come with the text are sometimes not understandable by them. So this, uh, this is an example of using a tool called Magic School to create a text uh, scaffolding. So they have a text scaffolding tool and what you do is you put the grade level, you put the number of questions that you want it to create based on the text. How many vocabulary words do you want to give the students? And uh, you can pick how many and then paste in your text. And again, I'm using water cycle. That's the example I'm using all through this presentation. Uh, it's something that, you know, they talk about in elementary, I think in fifth grade, the fourth or fifth grade, again, in middle school, and again, in high school, it's a very important uh, topic for students to understand. It's very applicable to their lives. So 
Uh, so it's a good example to use. But Judy Ann, can I interrupt? Is there supposed to be something on the screen right now? Because we don't see yeah. anything but lovely faces and names. Oh, I'm so sorry. I <laughs> yes. thought I was uh, sharing my screen. <laughs> okay. I'm uh, <laughs> so sorry. What happened to my screen sharing? I thought I clicked it. Thank you for letting me know. Let's try this. There you go. Now can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> so let me go back. So these are two ways to scaffold in magic school. There's an assignment scaffolder and there's a text scaffolder. And I'm specifically talking about the text scaffolder because this is one that I found to be very useful uh, for the for the English learners. So with the text scaffolder, you can choose, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, grade level how many questions you wanted to ask the student, a maximum number of vocabulary words to pull out, the tier two and tier three words to pull out of the reading, and then you paste in the text that you want them to use. So here are the results of this. So in this, uh, in this passage, it identified these five words, and these are uh, NGSS aligned vocabulary words that the students would need to know. And then it asks some questions. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Now, if I need to translate this, I can translate it. If it's still too, if these are too long and I need them to be shorter than they are, I can shorten it. I can also ask for help. There's a chatbot built in to Magic School, and I I can ask a question to make some changes to this. So always when you're using AI, remember to iterate so you can improve. Just because I got this answer, this was the first answer I got, does not mean I can be stuck with this answer. I can continue to improve it to meet the needs of my students. So I really, uh, I, I love this. I wish I could have had this a couple years ago. Uh, this, is, this is a really powerful tool to use. Has anybody here used this? I haven't, but it's like answering all my desires and wishes for that I can give something easy to my teachers so they can meet the needs of all my multilingual learners. I'm super curious. Translate. What does that do? So it'll. Uh, I'll. I'll we'll have a chance to play with this later. Um, okay. At the end, we're gonna. This is one of the magic school is one of the things that we're gonna be trying later. So I'm just showing you some examples of things that you might want to try. I think magic school has like 56 different tools, and this is just one of them. <laughs> so I just wanted to. So we'll we'll have a little bit of play time. Uh, so uh, next thing uh, I wanted to talk about was learning styles. So we know our kids love videos. Like some of my my middle schoolers, it's like they lived on YouTube. They love video. Uh, let's say I find a video, I I really like it, but I don't really want to. I don't have time to make up questions for all these different videos. There are tools to do that for you. Okay. What about designing lessons and assessment with more student voice and choice? Oh my goodness, I want to do more of that. I want to give my students that equity. I want to give them that inclusion. I want to give them that power. That takes a lot of time. There's tools to do that. And what if I want way to come up with ways for students to demo different ways for them to demonstrate their learning? Because I can't, I can't think. Oh, what are some ways for this part, this unit? Could what could the students do? I can use a chatbot to help me and have a conversation with the chatbot to help me brainstorm. So let's look at ways to do that. One is creating videos for a question. So this uh, link in the in the slides, this is to Magic School. So I link a video, I give it a, a YouTube video, I go to their question generator, boom, it creates the questions for me. So I can then after it creates, again, don't forget to iterate. If it needs, if there needs to be shorter, if I need to translate it into a different language, that way I can make, not only can I make questions, but I can make questions in multiple languages. Okay, so I need Spanish, I need Vietnamese, and I need Mandarin. Boom, I can do that. So 
this is it, it's just a fabulous tool to be able to use and I can use the video that I want not necessarily the video that's in my curriculum because I, I feel like the video is more engaging and I can totally make this lesson uh, for all my students what AI is this called this is from magic school oh magic mm -hmm. I have the link in the chat yep this is also in, in magic school. Uh, let's see. And then the next one I have is formative. So I'm just wondering, uh, in middle school, we used to use formative uh, because it worked with Canvas. So I would like write my own quizzes and things in formative and it would push the it would push the results into Canvas. Um, I believe it also can work with Google Classroom. Anybody used formative? Just like the regular formative, not the AI portion. Nope. Okay. Well, it was really great even before AI. Now it has AI and it's like, wow, I can't believe now you can do this with formative. So I love formative too. Um, I especially loved it in math because just in formative, you can have, you can do, they can do drawing results so they can actually like show their math solutions uh, in informative. So especially when we were, we were doing virtual learning, uh, all the students could show their learning instead of just doing multiple choice, which I'm never real excited about doing in, in math. Uh, so that's when I discovered formative and they had, now they have this AI. So let's say I want to create a lesson so I can auto generate a, a, a formative and it'll use AI to do so. So I tell it, what my topic is, I tell it the grade level, I say how difficult I want it to be. And, and you have to read like what they, what they mean by the different uh, difficulty. How long do you want, this is a quiz. So how long do you want it to be just a few questions or you want it to be longer? And then how many different kinds of question types you want to include? So I always, I like to have lots of, lots of different formats. So, uh, so you can uh, play with that also. Um, again, if you use something like Canvas or uh, or Google Classroom, I believe, uh, it's nice to be able to bring that back and take away the um, you know the burden of manually transferring information to your to your whatever your grading system is. So formative is is even without the AI, it's really really great. But it's uh, but with AI, it even becomes that much more powerful. Anybody? Um, just wondering what uh does anybody use Google Classroom or Canvas in there? I know we have a lot of K8, so I see some head shakes. Okay, thank you. All right. So the last thing I want to touch on, is this my last thing? No, I've forgotten, uh, is enhancing student engagement. So how can we create interactive quizzes for students or interactive activities? How can we get them engaged with interactive slides? How many people have used Pear Deck or what's the other one, uh, Nearpod? So, yeah. So I'm going to show you something like that, only better. And and then how can we all continue to engage students in critical thinking so we're not just creating multiple choice things and they're just guessing or whatever? So how can we make them really engaged in their learning? So I'm going to show you something super cool that I learned from a teacher on Facebook. <laughs> uh, there's a uh, there's a Facebook group for ChatGPT, and I highly recommend it. Every single day, I see teachers posting amazing creative ways to use AI in their classrooms, not just with ChatGPT. But if you're really interested in this, I recommend if you're on Facebook that you join. Um, it's one of the things I make sure to look at every day. But this is one of the things that I learned. So making, how many people have used Kahoot? I, my, I have used Kahoot um, elementary and middle school. The kids all love it. Pravin, yes. Are you just, yes, yes, you use Kahoot. Yeah, no, no, I was just saying. Okay, awesome. See, even middle, high schoolers, Kahoot. Yeah, it's fun, right? And the kids love it. And I've done it. They do it as teams or they do it individually. It's very engaging. Uh, they love Kahoot, but you can, but making Kahoot's so hard, right? It takes so much time. If I could, I'd have a Kahoot every day, like a, like a, or maybe a couple times a week to check understanding. 
And, but that would take me a long time to do that. I have created this template. And so uh, Anu shared it in the chat. And with this template, so you can modify it as you wish, uh, but this template will help you make a quiz for any topic and any grade level. So what you do is with the template is you replace whatever's in the brackets, the topic, how many questions, what the grade level is, okay? And you can create, and by replacing those, you can make a quiz or a, 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 a knowledge check or whatever you wanna call it for anything. So here, let me show you an example. So you'll notice that this prompt is a series of prompts. And if you haven't tried this with ChatGPT or Claude or any of the chatbots, uh, think about trying this because it will help you get better responses. So I'm telling the chatbot, I want to create a Kahoot quiz about the water cycle. I want five questions and I want six grade for sixth grade students. Now, what Kahoot needs is a spreadsheet. So I need this, and I'm using ChatGPT here. I need ChatGPT to make a spreadsheet for me. Okay, so I'm gives it the headings. And I still, the questions have to be less than 120 words. You know, if they get too long uh, and the answers are too long, it's the kids are not going to be able to read it, right? So you can change those if you wish. And I'm going to say, okay, don't create it yet. Just tell me that you understand that part and say, okay. And it says, okay. And then you go on to the next part. So now I want to fill in the question column with questions about the water cycle. Then I wanted to fill in the answers. Okay. And there should be one single correct answer and three incorrect answers. And I'm telling it to place the correct answers randomly, not always in the first column. And the incorrect answer should be about the same length as the other one. So they're, they're not really obvious that they're wrong. And then uh, draw the incorrect answers from the most common mistakes people make when they see that question or most common misconceptions. All right, and then put the correct answer in a random cell. And I'm telling it again, don't create anything yet. Just tell me, okay, if you understood. And it'll say, okay. And then you're ready for the next part of the prompt. So, and then the last part is the time cell. And you know, you can give them as much time as you want. Um, in this case, I said 30 seconds. And the final column is for which is the correct answer. Uh, and then format in a table and I execute. So here's a snapshot on the left of the spreadsheet that it made. And then Kahoot has a has a spreadsheet. Is it linked? Anu, I can't see the link on my <clears throat> the spreadsheet for this one? For the Kahoot, I don't see. Oh, I have I have the link. I'm gonna put it. Okay. Um, but they have a, a template. I thought I had put it in the bottom of the slide. It might be linked from the image. Mm -hmm. And I so I copy this mm -hmm. this spreadsheet and I drop it in the into the Kahoot template and upload it to Kahoot site and boom, I have a quiz on the water cycle. And it took me five minutes. Now the most time consuming part of this is adding the pictures because it doesn't do that. <laughs> So I had to add my own pictures, but otherwise it created it created a, a, a quick little knowledge check on the processes in the water cycle. So this this is just an amazing uh, process. And if you like Kahoots, uh, your students like Kahoots and you just dread having to make them, uh, I highly suggest that you use that template that's uh, that uh, a new linked um, you feel free to use it and then adapt it for your students. Mm -hmm. Now, the also interesting thing about this is you could have different versions of this. You could have different language versions or different levels. And especially if you're using Google Classroom, then you could share it to the students where it's appropriate. So you could really, you could really personalize this so your, all your students could access access this activity and it's really not that hard to do because once you've created it then you can then you can modify uh, language and and reading levels. So I hope that some of you tried that.
Okay, and then so the last, let me just to check, time check. Uh, our last example that I am um, to show you is Curapod. So is anybody, we, we talked about, uh, so Nearpod and, sorry, and Pear Deck. So I saw a lot of people familiar with those. And, but I want you to look, take a look at this one, which is called Curapod, okay? So I'm going to open up this Curapod. One second. I have way too many things open on my screen. Sorry, I didn't have this. Should have had this one open before. I had the other things open, but not this one. So what Curapod has that these other tools don't have, it, it has this built-in AI that allows you to add in activities to meet the needs of your students. So you can start from scratch and build your lessons in Curapod. Or if you have a Google Slides already and probably most of you do. You've got Google Slides. So you have this little box here that says Curify My Slides. So you could drop in your Google Slide deck here and it would create, it would, you could turn it into uh, Curapod uh, lessons. So what do we have? So when I think about like uh, with, with, uh, Pear Deck, you know, there was like the, what I always loved about Pear Deck is the SEL. So we have SEL questions. Yes, we have some check-ins. Okay. They've got, uh, you know, so there's some of this, which you may have seen in those, but this has so much more. I have, would you rather activities? I have discussion activities. I can get personalized feedback. I can have activities that connect to a reading text. I could do an inference and all I have to do is add, click on this to add, and then you'll see uh, what all the different things are. I can do a concept explainer. Uh, I can do compare contrast and all of these are already made and you just have to drop in what it is that you, you wanted to talk about. So we're gonna try it. I have an example. So in this example, we have this lesson. I'm trying to grab the link. Anu put it in the chat already. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, we need to put the link up there. The join that. the live link. Yeah. Oop, I just sent I'll, that to I'll you. I will send it. Thank you. Sorry, I just sent it to Anu. <laughs> just Anu? No, I want everybody to join. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am actually going to stop my share and switch over to the Curapod. And share the screen. So everybody is joining. Uh, and you can see, you know, the way this is set up. So it's anonymous, right, right now, but you can, you can change that however uh, you like to have, um, like to have your students joining. And uh, I can either provide it with a QR code. So if students, if you have students with uh, devices, like uh, uh, iPads or whatever, or if they, or they can join uh, with their, uh, computers Chromebooks with the link and I can set time limits if I want I can add and subtract time all right and uh, it's really just um, it's, it's really up to you what you'd like to do so if I go ahead and start so uh, wait a minute that went to the end sorry my, I'm so sorry it was because that's where I was in my slides I have to go back to the beginning. Okay, so uh, this CurePod starts with uh, talking about fossils. So this is a CurePod about about fossils, and my so this is I got I got this from a hook. So 
I use their hook activity and it asked me what is the topic. And so I wanted to ask a question to sort of, you know, hook them in. And it came up with half a dozen questions. And if I didn't like them, I could regenerate, but I picked this one. I really liked it. So I said, okay, I'll put this question up. And then people, uh, all the, the students can join and share their questions. Okay. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you time to all respond to all these, but I just want you to see all the, the possibilities. So we have this, that kind of question, and then what kind of, what type of rock? So this is a word cloud activity. So if everybody was typing in words, they would, it would form automatically form a word cloud. So if anybody wants to type in any kind of rock, don't worry. It's okay if you're wrong. <laughs> if you just want to guess, you can guess. Judy Ann, I'm looking at my phone because it's on my phone and nothing says like I can't type in it. I can't do anything. Am I missing something? Hmm. I don't know. I yeah, it just says your nickname, your real name. Oh, there we go. Oh, I had to push the I had uh, to push the timer. Okay. I'm sorry. I put I forgot oh, to push the timer. Now you can type. And I don't know if you can see on my screen, it said, did you know you can filter and moderate inappropriate responses? So I mm -hmm. actually have the capability to moderate. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, if you can, see, if it comes through on the presentation, maybe or maybe not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but, but what I love about this is mm -hmm. if I want to give people more time, I can. So right now it's count. It was counting down from two minutes because initially I said well, two minutes. This would be enough time. But say my students are really thinking about this, and I want to make sure everybody has a chance. So I can add more time if I want to. So I love having that flexibility of of how which I, something like with Nearpod is like you never had. It's like that's that's how much time you get, and it's moving on. Um, so so I really like that this has that built-in flexibility. Okay, but I am gonna move on. So I can actually open, I can actually add another activity on the fly. I can require real names or I can open moderation all from the slide. I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. And then it's going to, I can, then I can show the word cloud. And so here I, I click the stop button. So everybody had time and now uh, here's the words that we got. Okay. So I can share a learning objective, which is what we all probably do. I can share some text and this slide deck or career pod deck actually refers to uh, a text that is in the curriculum and the text is called a fossil goes missing. So it's a story about a missing fossil. So it's connecting science to language arts. I love that. Okay. And uh, so they have to work together to protect fossils and ensure that fossils uh, are uh, not lost. So, and then here's like some, a main, what's the main problem? So here I had, this is going to be an option for the kids to write what their main problem is. And I'm sorry, since we haven't read the story, we're not going to be able to answer this question, but I just want to show you um, what the, what the options are. So this, we don't have any answers for this. And I can actually give feedback to individual students from this. Okay, and then I'm gonna go on to the next one if it's gonna let me. There we go. Uh, and then here's a work together with pairs. So what methods do scientists use? And here's another example of a of a different kind of question. And if again, I always have the option to give more time. I have the option to moderate. And I know I'm sorry, I'm not giving you an answer, but we haven't read the story, so we can't answer them. But you get the idea that I can have so many different kinds of questions in the Curapod. And I'm just going to go back to, I'm going to, Go to the designer. Okay. 
I'm going to put this back over here so you can see what, what I see. So across the bottom, here's all the slides. So I've got word clouds. I've got feedback. I've got open questions. I've got polls. I've got all these different kinds of questions. And then in the middle, I've got some, some uh, more SEL uh, check-in kind of questions that aren't exactly about the story, but sort of, you know, turn the, the lesson a little bit. Would you rather discover a new species of dinosaur or uncover a complete skeleton of a known dinosaur? And then, you know, at the end, um, what was your favorite part? So another little uh, check-in. But so many, you can see on the left, all of those different kinds of activities, lots and lots and lots, way more than you've got with either uh, Nearpod or Pear Deck. As much as I love both of those and I've used both of them, CurePod is just just amazing. And again, if you just want to see what AI can do for you, you can you can filter by that. And again, it helps you come up with some of these activities, which I would not have come up with on my own because I'm so busy worrying about grading and emailing parents and, and doing all these other things to meet all my students' needs. This really helps do that. Okay, I'm going to take that away. All right. A uh, couple more things to show you. One is Twee. And Twee, like Magic School, has not quite as many uh, options as Magic School has, but has some, some really neat interactive and ways to engage students. So one thing that I always found challenging with my English learners was getting them engaged in conversation. But when I found it easier, if I came at them, if I said, here's a topic and here's like some, some people, different people's opinions, which one do you think is right? Which one do you agree with? Which one do you not agree with? And Twi has, has, a, has an AI in it where you can say, okay, let me show you, here's a topic and tell me four like random opinions and give those to students and they will start talking because they love sharing their ideas about different topics. So here's an example I did for, uh, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought I had the four opinions on this one, uh, but I don't, I have a different example. So I'll just tell you, let's say you put in climate change and it'll give like four different uh, people's opinions on climate change. And if that's what you're talking about in class, then it'll start them talking about that and then engage them in that speaking and listening activity that you want them to, that you want them to have. Um, I would not have the time to do that on my own. Uh, plus I, I might want to, you know, like it might, I might have my own bias associated with that. So I like that this comes and it just gives me the four opinions and that I can share with students. The, another thing that Twee has is again, again, so it has 29 different tools. These are just two that I'm showing you right now. And let's say we're going to read about, uh, about the water cycle again. Sorry, this is, uh, but Science is just so challenging for English learners and bringing in that personal experience. Uh, so let's say I want to warm, give to a warm up activity, a lean in activity to get them thinking about water cycle and how they can connect to it. So, okay, I'm going to put in my text and I'm going to say, help, give me some lead in activities. And it gives me some lead in activities, things I might not probably wouldn't have thought of on my own. Maybe my curriculum has some, but maybe my students don't. Does, they don't really work for my students. This will give me a lot more ideas and help me find one that will best uh, engage my students in a way that they can connect to. So um, again, another tool that Twee has that's free. And it's um, this is a really fun, this is a really fun one. And if you don't have a text, you can, uh, you can ask Twee to create one for you, or you can actually give an image too. I, I gave a text, I didn't give it a picture, but um, but this is one of the options. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's sh showed you so many things. <laughs> and now Anu's gonna lead you in trying some of these out. Yeah, 
thank you so much, Julianne. Those were really great apps and AI assisted tools that amazing and walking us through all of them. Well, now what we have is again, more tools to explore and I'm just gonna go through it. We have 15 minutes, so let's see if we get we get some play time. So these are tools about where you can uh, have content creation and differentiation that will help you in lesson planning, doing differentiated assessments and some AI powered specific feedback for writing assignments for students. So uh, I'm going to walk you through all of them, but not too much in detail so that you get time to play with it. So the first one that I'm going to share with you is Quillbot. If you can go to the next slide, Julia. Um, yes, so Quillbot is the one that helps you, um, uh, it helps paraphrasing. It is. It tells where it kind of polishes your email, it your documents and grammar check, similar to Grammarly, you can say, but it has lots more features in it. And as you can see, it has all these uh, ways you can translate to. Uh, this one is free, but it also has a paid version of it too, which adds more, um, you know, more things that you can do with it. Uh, the next one that I'm going to share with you is Magic School. AI with UDN showed you this is, I am very impressed with this and I really want to explore and dig deeper. This is a great tool for lesson plan generation generator and uh, translates in different languages. And as you can see, it has, it is compliant with FERPA and it has 56 different teaching tools. So I think it's going to be a treasure code for lots of assisted help to create great, amazing lessons. Okay, and the next one is Diffit. So if you can scroll further. These are um, resources where you, uh, this is a website, uh, again, AI tool that helps you just find, uh, to find the just right resources, saves tons of time, helps students access all grade level content, and it's easy to edit, share resources with students. And you can see it has, you can put in the key vocabulary terms, like you can have filters about what you need. It helps you summarize. So again, great place to explore more and see how you can use it. And uh, next slide, please. Of course, we have... Um, oh, sorry, Anu, I just wanted to point out that it actually yeah. generates the vocabulary words and the questions for you. Okay, okay. yeah. Okay, so, and the links are all there, hyperlinks. Um, so getting personalized feedback uh, using chat uh, GPT or chat bots to create a rubric. And one example, Julian showed how you can use it for creating a quiz on Kahoot. Uh, you can also use it to create a rubric. You can ask chatbot to apply the rubric to a student writing and giving feedback and then challenging, challenging the results if you disagree to improve the outcome. And um, uh, go on the next slide, and you will see there's a link on the bottom, which is on uh, Ditch That Textbook. It is about like how, like ChatGPT promises that it's, you know, going to give you great feedback and, uh, you know, create this rubric. But then uh, in, when you read this uh, lesson uh, chapter on ChatGPT, uh, this article on ChatGPT, you will see that it, it, it kind of challenges AI to ask, like, does it really keep its promise? Is it true that it really assesses and gives accurate feedback? So there's like a great uh, question answer session with AI where you are putting AI to test. So it's an interesting read. And um, if you go on the link, you can read more about it. And here's also an example of how you can set up the rubric to get to give personalized feedback. It's an example of that. And um, Moving on. Okay. Okay. So that's a resource uh, padlet that we have created, and we have a link for that too. So what we have been doing it, uh, and we would recommend and suggest, because right now you must be like bombarded with so many tools, so many apps, so many AI, you know, uh, tech, you know, assisted tools that exist. 
how do you like classify and categorize them and curate them? Because there's so many, you want to choose what applies to you, what applies to your students, what you can really use. So what we have done, that's what we have started creating since it, you know, started coming and, you know, exploding on the internet about like AI and its use. We started like curating and putting it in a Padlet. And it's our suggestion that you also create some place, not a Padlet, but anything that would help you organize all these tools that you come across so that when you need it, you can go to it directly. So please feel feel free to use our resource. And if you come across something and you would like us to add on this, let us know. We would love to add and your feedback is valuable because then we know that it is tested by you and can be shared with teachers. So go ahead and uh, if Julian, you can share the link or let me find the link. It is actually hyperlinked here. I will find it and just put it for you. It's in the it's in the chat for the, the padlets it is in, the, in chat? the chat. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, moving on to go on to the next slide. Okay. So Here's just a quick reflection question. We would love to hear from you. So if you click on this link and um, um, we would like to hear how would you use um, AI in your, um, what, uh, in, with your students. So uh, please go on the link uh, and give us two minutes and write us, write and share with you, with us your ideas on how you would use AI with your students. and. It's time for you to uh, explore some of those uh, tools that we have shared with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. And lastly, and not the least, is our feedback form at the end. If you could go on that and give us your feedback and let us know how, if it works and how how you're going to use these tools that we shared with you and we would love to hear from you. But we're not going yet. We still have another five minutes. So uh, please feel free to share your experiences and anything that you would like to ask right now. Yeah. So while we're here, if you need any of the links uh, reposted, mm -hmm. um, just go ahead and, and let us know. Um, and so take a couple minutes to try something out, um, ask questions. Uh, while we're here, that we can help you. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you didn't, if you saw something or didn't see something that you're curious about, um, most of you were sort of in the middle on our on our check-in at the beginning. So, how can we help you move up to that race car? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> race car. Does anyone move from where where were we the cycle or the car to sedan or? <laughs> next level well this is what i love about the fact that i have a technology specialist on my site and he gets paid just to dive into stuff like this so i can give him the padlet and say go <laughs> find him for our next <laughs> meeting that you can support our, our teachers with um i just see hours of, of my teachers like having so many more hours to their weekends by letting them use AI in order to work smarter, not harder, and meeting the needs of the various needs that they have in their classrooms um, at any level that they have, especially when it comes to our multilingual students. I just quickly did whatever the last one was up there. Um, I think it was Quillbot and how you can go from English and then you paraphrase it into another language. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's just like the most amazing thing mm -hmm. that can make it so succinct for our students that speak other languages. So I'm just really interested in diving into this and seeing what is, you know, what can I roll out each week in my Monday memo to the staff that they could work smarter, not harder. Yes, I, I remember one of my, one year I had, I had seven different languages in, in all my science classes. And it was like, okay, yeah, I can use Google Translate, but how long is it gonna take me to translate everything? and 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 then make questions for them and and quizzes that you know still meet uh, standards but adjust you know for all their different levels and oh my gosh it was how many hours was i spending doing those things and now it's like magic <laughs> <laughs> and i just love the idea that we're bringing 
better experiences to the students and but the but the teachers you know it's it's not so burdensome to the teachers that they can do this and and support their learning i just think that's it's amazing And yeah, and Carla mentioned about um, scaffolding text, which was always, it's just always something in, in science and math and also social studies. There's lots of academic language in, in some of the texts and, and how can we better support all the students. And Curapod, I mean, I, I'm sure that your teachers have used Pear Deck or, or Nearpod and just by uh, giving them this tool, to even take it a next step up, next step up to be more engaging, and be make better connections and get students talking more. You know, it seems like especially since um, since pandemic, that's that's something that they need more practice in. And by bringing those, uh, you know, helping teachers come up with engaging questions, getting them engaged in that conversation to bring our multilinguals out. Multi Lingual learners out and have them be sharing more of their opinions using their academic language in those discussions, I think is, is really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking of our newcomer students and Carla, I'm sure you can resonate with this. And you're mentioning adjusting and scaffolding texts. And when it comes just that to science, um, I, for example, one of the, our science teachers decided um, she was giving a quiz and it was literally the period that she has a group of newcomers and she called the newcomer teacher and says, all right, what do you want me to do with them? And I just cringed. I, I, I uh, <laughs> That's exactly what I said. And I just mm. left him like, oh my gosh. But if she had a resource to scaffold it or to change the, um, how to make a quiz. So it was at a particular level and insert those pictures like CuriePod would be perfect for that. It's a different way for them to access it versus somebody else where they can do the written one as proposed as, I hate to say it, as she's always done, although we wanna step that up. So it just gives teachers choices in, in order to do things that are A, more interesting for the students. It's AI, but it they'll have choice, you know, voice and choice yeah. when we're, you know, bringing that UDL that's with that. And it just hours of entertainment. That's all I can say. <laughs> Thank you. That's Very exactly right. About the tools and using that and sharing them with teachers. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we appreciate your, your feedback and uh, we have about two more minutes. So if you have not had a chance to complete the feedback, it's not too long. It's pretty short. So we appreciate your giving feedback. And just so you know, we are here at the county office. If you are interested in having more support uh, for your school or your district, uh, we're, we're here to help. And if you need help bringing it, I know not everybody has a technology specialist on their campus. So, uh, or in their district. So if, if uh, you just want somebody to to talk to or ask questions or come out and do training, whatever you need, let us know. And or any questions about anything that you've seen today, uh, we appreciate it. And thanks for giving your feedback and thanks for being here.